Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, another Torrance school is made modern. We'll take you to Walteria Elementary for their ribbon cutting. And the local landmark will soon be gone. We'll tell you what's happening to the Daily Breeze building. Then they've worked on the inside. Now they get help with the outside. We'll tell you why these women were pampered. Plus, a 9-11 survivor shares his optimistic story. These stories and much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. Here are your top stories. First Hall Middle School, now Walteria Elementary, reporter Hiba Samad takes us to the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the school that was next in line for modernization. It's like Christmas morning, and you're waking up, and you're unwrapping the gifts. Teacher Rebecca Massey is talking about the new improvements at Walteria Elementary School. Walteria is one of the oldest schools in Torrance, dating back to its first dedication in 1950. It brings a sense of pride because when the school looks good, uh, the kids are more respectful. Um, we're excited about the changes that are occurring. Thanks to bonds like Y and Z, Walteria Elementary School is one of the first schools to undergo remodernization. The remodernization now allows students to study in a fresher environment. Additions include large new windows that bring in natural light. Classrooms with uneven elevations were completely redone inside and out. While the school wasn't completely rebuilt from scratch, many of the facilities are brand new, including the playground and amphitheater. I feel great. It's much, it's much more fun and I like the new playgrounds. My favorite part of the school is the new classrooms and the playgrounds. Most importantly, the modernized entrance makes the campus safer with only one entrance that's closer to the main office. Well, we've always had the fencing, but now we ran it tighter to the school. So after school starts, the main gates lock. You have to enter our office to come onto campus. You still had to enter through the office and with the old, but if we weren't watching, somebody could have walked by. We were very diligent about it. This way they can't. So that makes it more secure. Walteria is one of the largest elementary schools in the district with enrollment of over 600 students. And thanks to the renovations, they'll all get to enjoy the new addition of a school library, something students never had before. Before, I think libraries were in classes, and now to have like their own library, it's going to be really exciting for them. And now, with physical improvements complete on Walteria, students are sure to have a brighter learning environment as well. It is really an improvement. You know, this improvement is not necessarily only for the kids, but it's for the environment, to, for the teachers to have a good teaching environment and translating into having students that are in a, in a place where they feel that the, the community wants them to learn well, too. The mayor also says there are more schools in the district next in line for modernization, and parents are hoping that this is only the beginning in revitalizing Torrance schools. Buildings age, and, and with technolo technology changing every year, they need to keep that updated for the kids. The kids are our future, so that's something they need to keep doing for all the schools. This is just a stepping stone, I hope, and I hope it continues. For City Cable 3, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hibba. The funds used for the Walteria renovation come from bond measures that were passed in 2008. The next school to reopen after its renovation is Magruder Middle School in November. We have a brief city council meeting to tell you about. The week of October 9th through October 15th is Fire Prevention Week. Nationally, house fires pose the biggest risk to residents, and more than 3,000 people die of burns or asphyxiation in their homes every year. Protecting residents and visitors in Torrance is the fire department's priority. They encourage all homeowners to install fire alarms and create escape routes to increase their personal safety. And for $260,000, Torrance will receive $400,000 in return. This may sound like creative accounting, but it's all legal. The L.A. County Metropolitan Transportation Authority, or Metro, allows cities that don't need their allotted Proposition A public transit funds to trade them with cities that do. Lomita will receive Torrance general fund dollars in exchange for their Prop A money. Torrance will use the funds for continued road improvement projects. 
The building on Torrance Boulevard was instantly recognizable to area residents, but soon the old Daily Breeze building will be gone. The newspaper occupied the building from 1965 to 2008. Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center later purchased the site for more than $14 million. This week, they started to tear down the old building. Providence plans to use the land to construct new medical offices. And what about those distinctive blue mosaic tiles? Well, they won't be completely lost. Some of the 8,000 square feet of tile that covered the old building's facade will be incorporated into the new office's design. And next week, we'll bring you a closer look at the history and future of the site. We get plenty of sunshine here in Southern California. Nevertheless, tanning salons are easy to find. But now it won't be so easy for teens to use them. Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill banning the use of tanning beds for all California residents under the age of 18. The bill was introduced by former Torrance Council member Ted Liu, who is now a state senator. Studies show that skin damage caused by the type of radiation used in tanning beds often leads to melanoma. And tanning at a young age increases that risk. According to the indoor tanning industry, 5 to 10 percent of their customers are under 18. So expect to see fewer indoor tanning facilities in the future. Currently, there are more tanning salons in L.A. County than there are Starbucks or McDonald's. That's hard to believe. Up next, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we'll tell you how women of all ages are taking charge of their health. Plus, we'll explain why these survivors are getting some beauty therapy at a local salon. Take out meals for just $12.99. Call them. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. I'm rich! This can't be real! Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig! moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Yes, ready, ready. Go get it. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and a local hospital made sure women are aware of how to keep healthy at an annual conference. Reporter Jacqueline Quinn takes us there. Roxy Diaz is in her late 20s, yet she's making it a priority to learn about health and wellness after losing her grandmother to breast cancer. You know, mammograms in the, in the time where she was, you know, as she when she was growing up, weren't very popular. It wasn't something that was pushed. It wasn't something that was recommended. And so um, it took a while for her to find out that she had breast cancer. And I think that was one of the reasons why, unfortunately, it wasn't kept caught sooner. And, you know, her, her life was cut short. Diaz was one of 550 who attended an annual conference hosted by Providence Little Company of Mary. The event was aimed at inspiring women to take charge of their own health and body. There were several small workshops on staying healthy physically and spiritually, and it ended with a keynote address at lunch. Today's conference is actually really important for people from our age group. I'm 27. Um, I don't think that we realize that we should start taking care of our bodies and ourselves as women at a young age. Joseph Zanetta is working to develop new facilities to treat breast cancer and other diseases at his hospital. He admits getting health care can get complicated. This is a way that people can hear about what's happening in the South Bay and then become ambassadors to get the word out of how they can make a difference. 
Linda Winklekowski points out that breast cancer awareness has a lot of room for growth since the days it was not openly discussed. She credits Betty Ford with making people more aware. She was the first woman to really come out and talk about her breast cancer because it was very hush hush and quiet. And, and that wasn't, you know, that was only 20 some thir year, 30 years ago. So in, the la in that span to today, I think it's a huge step forward for, for women. For the last 25 years, there's an explosion of pink in the month of October to increase breast cancer awareness. And for the last 10 years, the Power of Pink Conference has helped spread that message that one in eight women in the U.S. are diagnosed with the disease and that early detection is key. And while early detection is important, there are other factors women should consider as well. Besides the early detection is looking at all your risk factors. If you have a family history of breast cancer, um, if in fact you, you have some abnormal mammograms, if you're having some other, you, you, you have some other environmental risk factors, those things that you need to be quite aware of. And we're seeing less numbers of women with the latter stages of, uh, of breast cancer, but again, we can't stress as much as, you know, self-awareness, doing your own uh, physical sort of testing of, your, uh, of yourself as well as early treatment. So this is back in the day now, you guys. This is the 80s. I said, I'm on the road and I forgot my shoulder pads. Guess what? You can use a maxi pad. I'm recycling, sweetie. And funny woman Vicki Lawrence says she's glad to take part in the event and that laughter is also good medicine. We're all going through a lot of the same stuff together and I think that uh, it's best to keep laughing. I think it's fun to participate. It's great for women to bond and to get together and uh, if you're um, not affected by breast cancer, uh, chances are you will be at some point. Uh, chances are real darn good. For Diaz, after witnessing her own grandmother's struggle with cancer, she's encouraging others to attend events and be more aware of breast cancer so they can live a healthier and full life. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, um, it's just it's very important and there's an abundant amount of knowledge here and you, you might as well take advantage of, of an opportunity like this. And The proceeds of the event will benefit Providence Little Company of Mary's Women's Health Services. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. More than 200,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. For more information, visit the American Cancer Society's website at cancer.org.